Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the famous musical hit, Madame Sherry, starring Gordon McRae and his guest star, Nadine Connor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, if you're in a dancing mood, we think you'll enjoy tonight's show. The Metropolitan's lovely Nadine Connor is our guest as the little convent girl, Yvonne. In our production of the famous musical hit, Madame Sherry. I am Mr. Sherry, and with your permission, I'd like to tell you how there came to be a Madame Sherry. It's quite a story. A few years ago, I ran a dancing school in New York City. When you enjoy dancing as much as I do, and your pupils are so charming, who can make money from a dancing school? So thank heaven for my monthly allowance from dear Uncle Theophilus. Did I say my pupils were charming? Ah, yes. I can see them now lined up for the morning exercises. Excellent, excellent. Fine line, my dear. Uh, will you see if I'm doing this turn properly, Mr. Sherry? <laughs> Three more lessons, and you'll make Pavlova look like a telephone pole. But watch your arms. Remember, young ladies, young gentlemen, every movement must be graceful. Every gesture, a melody. Every little movement has a meaning all its own. As the lightsome mist cavort in catchy walls, the two-step and the ragtime bliss she found a last was false. The shotfish and the polka swing, she's laid them all away. Aesthetic dancing is the thing that holds the floor. Every little movement has a meaning all its own. Every thought and feeling by some past can be shown. And every love thought that comes a stealing or your being must be revealing all its sweetness. In some appealing little gesture, that's all it's all. Every little movement has a meaning on its own. Every fun feeling by some past it can be shown. And every love thought that comes a stealing or you must be revealing all its sweetness in some appealing little gesture. That's
pupils were charming, my allowance was ample, and life was most pleasant. There was only one catch, my uncle Theophilus. You see, the old geezer had no idea that the allowance he was sending me was being spent on furthering the development of a, a bevy of ballerinas. I thought he'd never find out, but one day while I was conducting a class, my housekeeper, Catherine, brought me a letter from him. Is something wrong, Mr. Sherry? You look very ill. Well, I don't feel very good, Catherine. Well, does the letter contain bad news? It certainly does. My uncle Theophilus and his niece, Ivana, are coming for a visit, and they're arriving today. Well, I should think you'd be very pleased, Mr. Sherry. Well, I'm not, Catherine. Wait till you meet my uncle. Oh, he's an odd one, all right. When I was young, Theophilus... Theophilus, who's he? He's an uncle of mine with eight million or nine, and he's very good to me. When I was a boy, it was his greatest joy, the piano I should play. But the coin he sent, I quickly spent <laughs> in a very different way. He's an odd man, he's a very odd man, is Theophilus, yes indeed. I must confess, he seems to guess just what I'll never need. Piano, juice, harp, drum, or fife, I couldn't play a tune to save my life. He's an odd man, is Theophilus, a funny old customer. He's an odd man, he's a very odd man, is Theophilus, yes indeed. I must confess, he seems to guess just what I'll never need. If I were bald as a billiard ball, he'll send me combs from now till fall. He's an odd man, is the Theophilus, a funny old customer. A funny old And now, class, if you'll excuse me for a few moments, I must prepare for my uncle's arrival. You just go on practicing, and I'll be back presently. Come, Catherine. Yes, Mr. Sherry. Catherine, you can see the mess I'm in, can't you? My uncle thinks this is a music conservatory, that I'm a talented pianist, and that I'm married and settled down. If he finds out I'm not any of these things, I'm certain to lose my allowance, my dancing school, and... Maybe even get my head knocked off. Oh, I hope he wouldn't go to any such lengths as that. You have such a nice head. <laughs> now, how long will he be here? Oh, I don't know, Catherine. He doesn't say. Well, couldn't you pretend that you have a conservatory and, and that you have a wife? Catherine? Where do housekeepers get such deceitful, devilish, wonderful ideas? <laughs> Well, after much persuasion, Catherine agreed to assume the role of Madame Sherry while my uncle was here. My uncle and his niece, Savannah arrived just as I finished telling my pupils there would be no more dancing lessons for a few days. Well, Edward, I must say this is quite a nice-looking conservatory, isn't it, Yvonne? Oh, it certainly is, Uncle Theophilus. <laughs> I'm glad to see you so happily married and settled, Edward. All young people should be married and settled. It's the ideal arrangement between the sexes. Yes, Uncle Theophilus. And now, if your good wife would be so kind as to show me to my room, I'd like to rest after dinner. Of course, if you'll just come this way. You know, I've been looking forward to meeting you for such a long time, Catherine. Do you mind if I call you Catherine? Catherine? Why not? That's my name. <laughs> Shall I show you to your room, Yvonne? Well, I'd like to sit here for a moment, if I may. This is all so exciting to me. You see, I've just finished school, and... Well, I imagine New York does look exciting to a schoolgirl. Well, especially to me. I'm just a little convent girl with wide and wondering eye. A little bird that left its nest and is learning how to fly. Yes, I've been told that there are things in cities large and small that never, never could be found behind a convent wall. Things that are not good for you to know. Why is it that 
first day of Yvonne's visit, I thought how dull to have to entertain an elderly uncle and a schoolgirl. Second day, I found it rather entertaining to show someone about the city who had never seen it before. And by the third day, I found that I had never seen New York myself until I saw it with her. That night, I took Yvonne and Uncle Theophilus and a round of the clubs. And when we arrived home, Uncle stopped off to bed. Yvonne stood in the drawing room talking to me for a moment. Oh, Edward, look at the lights of New York down there. How, how do you tell the lights from the stars? Well, maybe they tip the world upside down and we're walking on the Milky Way. Edward, are you really happily married? Hmm? Oh, I, I don't know. I suppose so. I never thought much about it. You never thought much about it? Oh, why do you ask? <laughs> I don't know. I just wondered... I I used to keep a picture of you on my dresser at school. I got it from Uncle. And when the girls asked me who it was, I'd say, that's my cousin Edward. When I grow up, I'm going to marry him. But then you got married before I grew up. Yvonne, if I weren't married... Yes, Edward? If you weren't married... I think it's time we said goodnight. Oh, I'm not sleepy. Oh, well, then shall we dance? Oh, Wonderful. I'll turn on the phonograph. You like to dance, Yvonne? Oh, I love it. Dancing can mean so much. too, Edward. You dance as well as Mr. Dimble. Well, who on earth is Mr. Dimble? Oh, he was our dancing instructor at school. Dancing instructor? Oh. Edward. Yes, darling. As long as this is only a make-believe night anyhow, do you suppose it would be all right if we pretended for a moment that I did grow up and marry you? Could we pretend that just long enough for you to... to kiss me goodnight? I think perhaps it can be arranged. And every love that comes 
Turn for the second act of Madame Sherry in just a moment. And now here is the second act of Madame Sherry, starring Gordon MacRae and his guest star Nadine Connor. Uncle Theophilus and Devon paid me quite a lengthy visit. And as the days passed, I found myself thinking more and more of Yvonne. Of her eyes, very special eyes. Of her hair, very special hair. And especially of her smile. Some like a girl who is clever, who plays the piano and sings. Some like a girl who is ever well-dressed with her jewels and rings. Some like her graceful and slender, think a queen is alone worth their while. But the girl that you love, all oh, girl is above, is the girl who knows how to smile. Maybe a bright smile, a winsome light smile, maybe a smile that simply beams, maybe a sad smile, maybe a glad smile, maybe the smile you see in dreams, a smile that's haughty, bewitching, naughty, and full of mischief, blue and true, but large or small smile, the best of all smile, it is the smile she means for you. Maybe a bright smile, a winsome light smile, maybe a smile that simply beams, maybe a sad smile, maybe a bright smile, maybe the smile you see in dreams. A smile that's haughty, smile that's haughty bewitching, naughty, bewitching naughty, and full of mischief through and through. But large or small smile, the best of all smile, it is the smile she means for you. The smile she means for you. In front of Uncle Theophilus, I did my best to appear a devoted husband to Madame Sherry. Gradually, the whole business began to be too much for me. It was also becoming too much for Madame Sherry and too much for Yvonne. Each time Uncle forced me to kiss Catherine, Yvonne seemed to get terribly upset. And I wasn't too crazy about it either. The night before my uncle and Yvonne were supposed to leave, Yvonne and Madame Sherry got into a rather intimate conversation. You are a very fortunate woman, Madame Sherry. Mm -hmm. well, why do you say that? Oh, how proud you must be to be his wife. You mean Mr. Sherry's wife? Well, naturally. You always call him Mr. Well, I believe you're in love with him. Yes, madam. But I shall never see him again after tomorrow. Then tell him. But aren't you in love with him? Him? Of course not. Then why did you agree to be his wife? Well, the pay was good. Uh... <laughs> uh, I don't think I understand. My dear child, I am not his wife. He asked me to pretend to be his wife so that his uncle wouldn't stop his allowance. You're not his wife? I'm his housekeeper, and I have a nice, fat husband of my own. And I had a hard time getting him to agree to this, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, thank you for telling me this. You changed the whole world for me. Now, I'm going to find Mr. Sherry and tell him that I've told you. And from then on, it's up to you. Oh, he isn't married. He isn't married. And I've been so jealous every time he kissed. 
my niece? Yvonne, are you kissing Edward Sherry? I'll tell you in a minute, Uncle Edward, as soon as we finish. Mm. Mm. Uh, Yvonne, uh, Edward, what are you thinking about? You, a happily married man. I am not a happily married man. Then you're an unhappily married man. He's not married at all. Not married? You mean that woman who lives here, who calls herself Madame Sherry, is not is That's not... exactly what we mean. She just took the job for money, Uncle Theophilus. What? <laughs> now, wait a minute, wait a minute, Uncle. I'll try to explain. You see, I... I was... Well, it is rather difficult to explain. It's, I uh... can see why it might be. No, it isn't. Uncle Theophilus, Edward wasn't married, but you said he should have a wife. So he pretended he had one, but he really didn't. Oh, I see. In order to cheat me out of my money. That's right. No, no, that's right. No, no, Uncle, in order to... Well, I couldn't keep the dancing school running without any money. And it takes time to get enough pupils. Dancing and... school? I thought this was a music conservatory. Uh, it's a music conservatory of the dance. That's right. You've got to have music to dance to. You can't dance to somebody reading the dictionary out loud. Anyhow, when you wrote you were coming, Edward had to have a wife... So he asked his housekeeper if she'd pretend to be Madame Sherry when you arrived. Mm -hmm. And you did, and mm -hmm. she did, they did, and that's the whole story. So there isn't any Madame Sherry at all? No, but I hope there's going to be. Oh, after all, Uncle, it's a situation very easily remedied. Yvonne, something tells me I let you leave that girl's school entirely too soon. <laughs> Could you be happy, Yvonne, living with a very poor man? Oh, darling... I could be happy anywhere with you. Oh, Uncle Theophilus, you know, I never drink, but I'm getting a little high on sherry. All right. All right. I give up. If you two are determined to get married, I see no reason why I should pay the heavy and have everybody hate me. I'll continue both your allowances. Oh, Uncle Theophilus, you're an angel. You're wonderful. <laughs> I'll never be able to thank you enough for coming on this visit. Otherwise, there might never have been. Madam Sherry. Every little move has a meaning all its own. Every thought and feeling by some past you can be 
Connor will be back in just a moment. And our thanks to Ted Osborne, who was Uncle Theophilus, to Isabel Jewell, who was Catherine, and to our entire company. Madam Sherry, with book and lyrics by Otto Harbach and music by Carl Hoschner, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Gene Holloway. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. And now here again is lovely Nadine Connor. Nadine, it's wonderful having you back with us in the show train. Oh, I love these shows, Gordon. The fellow always chases the girl until she catches him. That's right, and I'll be chasing you again on December the 17th, Nadine, and we're looking forward to it. Uh, what's on the show train next week, Gordon? The opera, Martha. Oh, wonderful. And Dorothy Kirsten is going to be our guest. Oh, it's one of my favorite, uh, Gordon, and uh, we'll all be listening. Good night. Good night, Nadine. All aboard. Well, sir, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night, when Dorothy Kirsten joins us for our production of Martha, this is Gordon McRae saying good night, everyone. <laughs> Madam Sherry was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can be seen in Warner Brothers on Moonlight Bay. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> Proceeding transcribed. Stay tuned for the telephone hour next on NBC.